it's also my pleasure today to introduce our keynote speaker jeff ma many of you may remember from the mit famous blackjack team the inspiration for the the movie twenty one and so much coverage of data and analytics and how it was used to bring down the house well jeff is now using that same so skill set that same expertise in data and analytics and i think our industry can learn a lot from it so please join me in welcoming jeff ma So uh, thanks for having me here. Um, one of the questions I always get asked is, uh, so are you allowed back in Vegas? <laughs> and apparently there's no one that waits for, for me at the jetway of McCarran Airport and says, excuse me, Mr. Ma, you have to turn around and go home. Uh, I'm allowed here. I'm just not allowed to play blackjack pretty much anywhere in Vegas. <laughs> so uh, how many of you guys have seen 21 or read the book, Bringing Down the House? Okay, I know it's 9 a.m., I know you're in Vegas, uh, but I need a little bit more enthusiasm. So, uh, the movie 21, uh, it all started in 2001. A friend of mine by the name of Ben Mezrick was a writer. He had written about six novels at that time, but it's fair to say that his career was pretty much in the shitter. He had business school applications out and was contemplating no longer being a writer. And I walked up to him and I said, Ben, I have a great idea for your next book. And he said, what is it? And I said, well, me and my buddies from MIT, we go to Vegas and we use math to beat the casinos. And this sort of like glossy look went over his face and he said, you know what? I don't think anyone wants to read a book about a bunch of MIT nerds. And then about a month later, I took him with me to Vegas and I showed him what we did. And he said, oh my God, this is the coolest thing. We should write a book about this. And I said, great idea, Ben. So he took this proposal to his publisher. His publisher looked at it and he said, you know what, good story, but I don't think anyone wants to read a book about a bunch of MIT nerds. Well, we didn't listen to her, and we wrote a book called Bring It Down the House, and it was a New York Times bestseller for over a year. And then a guy by the name of Kevin Spacey read the book and liked it so much that he turned it into a movie called 21. 21 was number one in the box office two weeks in a row and made uh, $150 million off a $35 million budget. And one of the real bits of Hollywood magic, and I mean real Hollywood magic, is how you turn an average looking Asian American male into a dashing British white guy, <laughs> which is what they did in the movie. I was the inspiration for the main character. The movie went on. As I said, did really well. Ben Mezrick, the writer, went on to write a book called The Accidental Billionaires, which got turned into a movie called The Social Network, which won an Oscar. And I can say I made Ben Mezrick who he is today. So. Okay. I always like to tell a few stories that weren't in the book, weren't in the movie. So those of you guys in the gaming industry, you think about your emerging markets, new places that are opening and legalizing gambling, etc., new types of games. For card counters like ourselves, our emerging markets were the opening of any casino. Because we would always go there and we would see and be seen and try these new games out, try the new blackjack out at that table. And typically we would just go to new casinos. And so there's always three types of people that you see at the opening of any casino. And I expect this crowd to be able to get this answer. There's car counters, there's celebrities, and what's the third type of person you always see at the opening of every casino? Well, I, I'm gonna leave this joke till the end because this industry obviously does not wanna talk about this. So I was at the, uh, the real estate conference, I'm sorry, I was at a, uh, the opening of the Bellagio. And this is maybe what, I don't know, like 15 years ago. And there I am, opening the Bellagio, playing blackjack with Kevin Costner. And Kevin Costner has his crew of friends around him. And Kevin is a good blackjack player, meaning he does the right thing most of the time. And then all of a sudden, he starts to lose. And every hand he loses, his friends look at me and say, God, this is like Waterworld all over again. <laughs> My second favorite story comes from the first NBA lockout. So in the late 90s, the NBA had a lockout. 
They, where do you think NBA players go when they can't play basketball? Well, they often go to casinos. I had the pleasure of playing blackjack with a bunch of the Knicks at Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut. And I sat down and I played with John Starks and Patrick Ewing. And you guys all remember John Starks, who was this sort of gritty guy from the streets, fought for everything. The first thing he does is sit down and order a bottle of Merlot. And I went and saw John Starks go through this transformation that I'm sure many of you guys have seen you know, your friends go through. Maybe you haven't gone through yourself, but you start as sort of this sober, intelligent human being. And then after a little while, you become a little bit dicey in your sort of judgment. And John went through this sort of transformation. He puts his last $500 on the betting circle, and the dealer gives him an 11, and John and the dealer has a six up. So an 11 against a six, what do you do? You're playing blackjack. You double down. So unfortunately, John doesn't have any more money left. I flip him back a $500 chip, and I say, John, pay me back when you win. The dealer gives him a five to make 16, and John goes, man, you just jinxed me. And I said, it's OK, because I'm counting cards. So I know that there's probably a good chance that the dealer's going to bust. <laughs> and I say to John, I say, uh, I think you're still going to win. The dealer flips a 10 to make 16, gets another 10 to make 26. John pays me back my $500 without a word of thank you. <laughs> and it was at that moment that I decided I would never have John Starks on my fantasy basketball team. <laughs> I really showed him. So those of you guys that have seen 21, you know that I'm in the movie, correct? I'm in the movie. This is so sad. Saddest moment of my life. Everyone's like, uh, I don't know. So I play a dealer named Jeffrey. The guy that plays me, Jim Sturgis, walks up to me and says, Jeffrey, my brother from another mother. We have a witty back and forth. I have like three lines. I got a sad card. It still is not ringing any bells to people, is it? Well, if you want to go back and watch it, it's at about 59 minutes and three seconds. <laughs> so this wonderful scene that none of you seem to remember took three days to film. And the second day I was out there, the cast, Kevin Spacey, Lawrence Fishburne, Case Bosworth, they say to me, hey, Jeff, we'd like to take you out to dinner tonight. And thank you for letting us tell your story on the big screen. And I said, OK, that'll be cool. So after we're done shooting, we go over to the Palms Casino. We're headed over to, uh, to sit down and play, and, and to sit down and eat dinner. And as we're going over there, Kate Bosworth pulls me aside, and she says, and keep in mind, I'm 30 and single at this time. And she says, hey, Jeff, I've got a really fun idea for what you and I can do after dinner. <laughs> and I said, OK, tell me more, Kate. And she said, I think it'd be really fun if we go and we play blackjack, and you can coach us, and we can win a lot of money. And I said, Kate, First off, that's not what I was hoping for. Second of all, I think that's a terrible idea. And she said, why? And I said, well, we're going to the Palms. They know me really well. They're not going to want me to play blackjack there. And she said, it's OK. You'll be with me. I'm a big star. They won't bother you. And I said, Kate, it's been a long time since Blue Crush. I don't know how big star you are anymore. <laughs> but what seemed like this terrible idea, after seven or eight bottles of wine, seemed like this amazing idea. And we go up to the Palms Casino sit down at the table. The floor person knows me, walks up to me and says, Jeff, what are you doing? And I said, I'm here to play blackjack with Kate Bosworth, Blue Crush, big star, no big deal, right? He calls upstairs and he says, not only are you not allowed to play blackjack, but if your little friend Kate's at the table, you're not allowed to be within 20 feet of the table. What was cool is that gave me a lot of street cred with Kate because she thought I was dangerous at that point. <laughs> He's really dangerous. It didn't get me anywhere with her, but at least she thought I was dangerous.